Okay, a part two. I want to have a brief discussion about boundary conditions uh, for time independent Schrodinger's equation. So, first of all, the wave function has to be uh, continuous. Continuous. It has to be continuous because if it's not continuous, if a wave function has a step like this, uh, that means that uh, this is sort of equivalent to fitting in uh, a harmonic with an infinitesimal wavelength, so infinite k. So therefore, this wave function contains uh, an infinite momentum. It describes a particle with an infinite momentum, which is not physical. So your textbook has a very beautiful uh, drawing. It says that that's like fitting in a, a wave component uh, with uh, the wavelength goes to zero, k goes to infinity, therefore p goes to infinity. So this contains this corresponds to a particle with an infinite momentum on physical. So the wave function has to be continuous. It has to be continuous. It cannot have jumps. How about the derivative of the wave function? Can you have, well, okay, it has to be continuous, but can you have can you have a discontinuity in the derivative? Can you have something like, like this? This is a continuous wave function, but it has a discontinuous first derivative. Is that allowed? Is that okay? Or does it have to be smooth? So which is it? So note that I can rewrite my Schrodinger's equation like this. can multiply this by minus 2m over h bar squared times psi. So if potential energy is continuous, if it doesn't have singularities, infinities, all kinds of, if it doesn't have, sorry, if potential energy has no infinities, let me say it like, let me put it like this. Uh, has no infinities, uh, then the whole right hand side has no infinities. And I can integrate the whole equation through a point in question, for example, here. And if it has no infinities, then when I integrate over a small bit, over an infinitesimal bit, the change in the derivative goes to zero. In other words, I know, I know you probably did not understand what I said. If the right-hand side is just a normal function. So I can plot the right hand side versus x and it's some kind of a boring function. And I can integrate over a small region right here. If, if there's nothing pathological going on here, no infinities, no nothing, the smaller the region of integration, the smaller is the value and it will go to zero. So the difference in the first derivative, when I integrate the second derivative, I get difference in the first derivative, will go to zero. And this says that uh, derivative of psi is continuous. So in general, this kind of thing is ruled out. 
if potential energy has infinities in it, for example, like an infinite well, where potential energy goes to infinity, the second rule can be relaxed. So in general, the wave function has to be continuous and the derivative has to be continuous. So the wave function has to be smooth. If the potential energy has an infinity in it, the wave function still has to be continuous, but the derivative is allowed to have an abrupt change. With that in mind, let's go back to particle in the box, to particle in the box, or infinite well. And I'm going to change the problem slightly. I'm going to shift the infinite well to go between zero and L. So the potential energy is infinite here. Potential energy is infinite here. Particle is not allowed to be here. If it's not allowed to be there, that means the wave function is zero. Not allowed, you cannot find the particle. The wave function is zero. A wave function inside the well is going to be non-zero. We discussed that you cannot have a discontinuous change. Wave function has to be continuous. So that's not allowed. And we discussed that in general, the derivative has to be continuous, but in this case, it doesn't have to be continuous. So you can have something like the wave function experiencing an abrupt change in derivative and then something go, something happening here. Whatever is happening here, that's what we're gonna solve. We're gonna find wave function inside the box and we're gonna find energy or energies inside the box. Okay, so that's the program. So let me summarize what we're going to solve. Now that I can set up the problem, let me just summarize. Uh, Potential energy goes to infinity, okay, so it's infinite. So summary of infinite well problem. Solve plus a zero potential energy is zero inside equals e psi for x between L and zero. Outside, we already know the solution. Wave function is zero. With boundary conditions that the wave function at x equals zero is zero because if it's zero outside and it has to be continuous, it has to be zero at the edges too. You cannot have a discontinuity in the wave function, remember? And similarly at x equals L, the wave function connects to the outside. Outside the wave function is zero. And because it has to be continuous, the wave function has to be zero at x equals L. So these are our boundary conditions. This is our equation. These are boundary conditions. And the rest is just solving this, okay? The rest is just solving this problem. That will be in the next video. So I set it up. Now we can actually do the math, okay? All right, thank you.